Uh, greetings to all the saints who have joined this morning from all over the world and particularly who are in Bangalore. This is such a wonderful day to celebrate and I'm so glad to hear the wonderful promises Dr. Uh, Jairaj Shamal has brought to the church. Return, I will restore. Wonders, wonders, that is going to be your name. And I'm going to fill you with my glory and I'm going to bless you. What a blessed words that has been spoken over our lives through the anointed servant of God from the word of God. I believe that we need to hold this very close from this day onwards till we see God's return, Jesus' return, and we will accomplish the task that he has given to us. And thank you so much, Pastor Ashley and Sheba, for inviting me to be part of this joyful celebration. It's such an honor and privilege. I want to congratulate all the church members who have been working hard along with your shepherd. Our chief shepherd is Jesus, but with your shepherd in Bangalore and strengthening the church. The ones who put the chairs, clean the carpets, and those who fix the microphones and provide the video services, who serve at the table, those people are the ones on which God's strong body is built, the church is built, and the glory of the Lord is upon their lives. And you're all part of that service that you are doing for the Lord. And also want to congratulate Pastor Ashley and Sheba and children for your dedication and for your commitment to serve Jesus and his church. And I believe that your only desire is to make the bride beautiful and as honorable when the Lord returns. I pray that let the church be pure, let you be a faithful steward to keep them and take them to that wonderful day as the Lord comes back. Twelfth year is always very significant. Number 12 is very significant in the Bible. About 187 times it's mentioned 12, 12, 12, 12. You can count 187 times there are 12 sons of Jacob, 12 tribes. In the New Jerusalem, there'll be 12 gates, 12 angels, 12 foundation. So 12 represents perfection and authority. It represents wholeness and completeness. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, we read about the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, for her condition was so bad for 12 years and not possible for a cure, but on the 12th year of the, the difficult time frame is over and something new has hot started happening to her life. And I believe that as we gather to remember and to celebrate, we are on the edge of a new day. We are on the beginning of a new day. And I am, I'm reminded about Joshua chapter four, when they were the whole nation just after finishing the you know crossing the Jordan there are two 12 appears there when he's God is asking Joshua to pick up 12 people 12 men from each tribe and they were asked to go and pick up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan where the priests are standing and they were asked to carry these stones as a memory of God's action. Hallelujah. And I believe that today as we celebrate the 12th year, we are asked by God to look back into God's action, memorial, like memorable actions and then carry it forward to our camp. And that's a very significant thing that we need to do today. So when we read chapter four, verses one to nine, we see this amazing story. So I just want you to keep that reminded about that story. And when you get time, 
please read the story very thoroughly. But for me, it is very important to highlight two things about this story. You know, the people obeyed what God said to Joshua to pick up the stone and to, to take it to the, to the place they were standing. And, and, and why the reason why God asked them to take these stones was that there is a reason because in the future, because this is going to be a memory of the future being asked to be in the present, a future now. Memory of the future is what God is asking them to do. And the question is, is that the reason why you have to do is that when your children ask what would these stones mean, then you need to answer the flow of Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant when it crossed. Hallelujah. So this is exactly the point. You know, God's Presence is the memory that need to be remembered and that need to be transferred to the next generation. And that is why we are celebrating the 12th year today as people of God. And the most beautiful thing about this story is that I'm just summarizing this as an introduction to what the Lord has put in my heart to share. So the beautiful part of the story is that there were two memorials being built. One, the 12 stones to be carried by 12 men representing the 12 tribe and carried to the camp where they were staying, which is about six miles from the Jordan, which is the Gilgal, which is the place that is later known as Gilgal. That is a place where they carried the stone and this memory was. So this is an outward symbol. It was an outward symbol of God's action. There were people who were carrying. People of Israel could see that these men were carrying God's providence for them, provisions for them, God's promises of memory for them. But then there is one more important thing in verse 9, there is another set of stones being erected and that is done by Joshua. He sets up 12 stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priest who carried the ark of the covenant had stood. That means that there is a second set of stones being put by Joshua himself, maybe inside the Jordan, where their feet were touching the water. That is the place he put these stones. And imagine when the water comes back, when the flood comes back, nobody will see these 12 stones. These are memories which will be covered in God's glory in the new space. There are outward signs of memories and at the same time there are inward symbols of memories that we need to keep in our hearts as we move forward. The last 12 years, only you know how hard it was. Only your pastor knows how difficult it was to carry God's people from one point to the other. There were visible presence of God with you. There were invisible presence of God that was with you. These were the memories that the Lord want you to keep with you as you move forward. Today is a day, is a, is a new day that you are embracing yourself to something new. As we embrace ourselves to the new, we will not look back with sentiments. That is not the purpose that the Lord has God called, you know, his people of, uh, people of Israel. You know, you can always be so sentimentally attached to the space, to the events, to the people, to the words, to the things that you like to do in the past. You can carry and live with the same sentiments to your future, but that is not the purpose that the Lord is placing before us this morning. It is not a memory of your sentiments of the past, but it is a memory for the future 
for your children, for the good things that the Lord is planning to do for you in your own personal life, in your church together, in your pastor's life, and the promises that God has given to you in this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to take yourself to the whole story. Now we have come to the promised land with Joshua. They have crossed the Jordan. They are about to receive everything good that has been the land being assigned, all those things. But in fact, the story begins in Exodus chapter 3 and 4, where Moses has been designated, has been called by God to move and to take the people into that great ministry of deliverance. And this story has been picked up in the New Testament in Acts chapter 7 verses 22 to 29 and verse 35. I wish I had time to read it completely, but I just want to say that, you know, why the New Testament writer would pick up the story of Moses retell the story of Moses when the church was at the beginning on the Pentecost, immediately after the Pentecost, after the Spirit being upon them. Because it throughout the generations, these stories will remind us about how we need to move forward, how we need to act ourselves, join ourselves in the things of God so that God can achieve what he intends to achieve to a group of people who are willing and obedient for his purpose. Shall I turn to your attention to chapter 3 in Exodus where in verse 10, verse 12, God says to Moses, now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And then in verse 12, God again says, I will be with you. I will certainly be with you. Now you need to imagine the story here that Moses is no more a prince. He's in the wilderness, wandering around. Suddenly he sees God's presence in the burning bush. God gets his, his attention and he is so curious to see what the Lord is doing. But you need to remember that till that point, he had a dream. He knew that there is a calling that is upon his life. He knew that God has called him, drawn him out of water so that he can be a deliverer for his people although he was living in the courts of Pharaoh. He had a dream, but his dream failed during that time. And as a prince, he tried to complete that dream by beating up an Egyptian who was trying to fight, argue with an, Egypt, uh, with an Israelite. You know, but that didn't work. When he heard that others are watching, he ran away from, from his uh, position, from his authority. He, he moved from this and moved into wilderness. And it is that time there is an audible voice that comes to him. Now, as we see in this chapter three, we see that there is a powerful presence of God that is a burning bush it attracted him, but he is not convinced himself to move from the wonder that he has seen, the miracle that he has seen. Seeing a miracle is important. Seeing a wonder in your life is important. But what is important is to move, is to move forward with the wonder that God has given in your life. But God knew that this guy is already, you know, he was, you know, uh, surprised by the miracle, but he is not yet willing to move. Then in verse 5 onwards, 
and he, he God gives him a prophecy. He says that I am the God of your fathers. I'm speaking to you. I have visited you and I've heard the cry of my people and their suffering. And I'm going to promise you that I'm going to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And then he promises that he, there will be resistance from the nations around them. But then there will be signs that will follow and you will be blessed. Verse 21 says that you will not even go out with empty hands. Gold and silver will be, will be with you. And Moses will speak to the Pharaoh. After the burning bush experience, there is a powerful prophecy that comes to Moses. Amazing. But for Moses, this is not enough. He still feels that he's looking for something more. Sometimes in our own lives, as church, we always look for something more to come in to prove your faith. Please don't get into that false situation. When God gives you a wonder, move. When God gives you a prophecy, move. Don't look for an excuse to see for another. This is the time. This is the season. Move in the power of God. Hallelujah. It took for Moses so many years to remember that and to say in chapter 33 in Exodus, until your presence go with me, don't send me, Lord. It took for a long, it took a long time for him to understand. But for me, it's very important for us to remember this particular passage because I'll be coming into three important things that you need to consider as a church as we move forward. And that's in chapter four. But before the chapter four's key things coming in, the chapter four begins with Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Suppose, but suppose, what if Moses, after seeing the powerful presence of God through the bush fire and the prophecy over the life of God's people, he's still in a doubt. He still says, suppose, what if? If there is someone here this morning with that at attitude of suppose, last 12 years, are we going to continue the same? then there is an answer that the Lord wants to give you this morning. Speculation is an ability to see things through the past fears and past failures. This morning, the spirit of the Lord wants to encourage you by saying that don't look at life with speculations because Fear will empower you and fear is a false evidence appearing as real for God's people. Fear. False evidence appearing real for people. That is fear. This morning, no more doubts. Moses was asking after seeing all these wonderful things, after seeing the 12 years of wonderful things of God in their lives. Will I be heard? Will Pharaoh listen to me? This morning we need to humbly come before God. And what is God saying to Moses? He gives them three signs. He gives him three signs. That is what I want you to focus this morning. These signs are for two purposes. One purpose is that these are signs for the elders 
within Israel and at the same time to Pharaoh, signs for the others. God is giving Moses the sign that these are signs for others, Pharaoh and the leadership of Israel. But at the same time, this is also a sign for Moses because he has been holding himself captive. Moses, you need to release yourself from your own fears, from your own barriers, for, from your own boundaries that encircles you. This morning is a season and a time and a new day that is beginning where the Lord wants to release upon shelter house from pastor to the believer, to the children, for men, young men, women, everyone, that you are no more held captive, but I'm going to release you into something greater and bigger because this is a new day. So let me share with you what the Lord is saying to Moses and to us this morning. Number one, verse three, chapter four, verse three, um, in chapter uh, verse two onwards, then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses, Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and turned back into, the, into a staff in his hand. This said the Lord is so that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers and God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, has appeared to you. That's the first sign that the Lord is giving to Moses. What is it? God is asking, hey, what is in your hand? He said, it's a road, it's a staff. Imagine now Moses who has left Egypt as an educated man, as a prince, he, he knows the riches the authority and the power. But when he killed the Egyptian, he moves from prince to a fugitive, from a man with a mission to a murderer, he was a concerned man to a convict, he was a secured man to a scared person. He had the scepter in his hand before, but now he has a rod. Road represents what he has now become. Road represents what he has now become. It has, it is representing his past. And God is saying, throw it down. Throw it down. And it becomes a serpent. And what does Moses do? He is running away from it. He is fleeing away from it. And we know that, you know, serpent and chapter three of Genesis onwards, we see that it represents the evil, the, the Satan and those kinds of things. And Moses is now running away from that past that scares him. The failures of the past that scares him. Let me tell you as people of God this morning, if you are carrying your road this morning of your past that scares you, time for it to lay it before the Lord as he commands you this morning. It may be the serpent, it may be the shape, it's, it, it shows you, it scares you, but don't run away, don't run away. Maybe as a church, maybe Pastor Ashley and Sheba has gone through challenges 
of the road of the past which scares you that you don't want to go through that road again but this morning the spirit of the lord is saying to you don't run away from the road which scares you but the lord is saying pick it up pick it up now it's time for you to pick it up god is in control and when you pick the tail of the serpent then it becomes a new tool for his glory and for his purpose unless you are able to see god who is in control of our past and has power over the past of our lives and unless we are prepared to face the accuser and the liar and unless we are ready to pick up the past and the snake and the serpent you will never be able to exercise the authority of god upon your life and upon the life of your ministry moses has a fresh hand on the road that is the promise that the lord wants to give you as a church church you are having a fresh hand on the road this road is no more a, 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 an instrument of your past but it is the instrument and a tool that the lord will use for wonders for the future when people of god were waiting at the red sea what did the lord say when the enemy was coming behind what did the lord say stretch forth your staff baba shandara bashi koriyas stretch forth your staff to the future and the red sea let it divide for my people to walk in and the enemy's work will be finished oh destroyed and the glory will come to god's people moses miriam people will rejoice it is the same road that struck the rock for the water to gush forth and to bless god's people the road is no more the the serpent that fears you it's no more the past that controls you but it is a road that's been controlled by god and it's been given to you it's in the fresh hand it's in your hands now it's the authority that the lord is giving you at the 12th year of your completion and you receive it in the name of jesus and this road is not for just for your own personal blessings this road is an authority as shelter house been given over the nation you are authority over the nation over in bangalore over karnataka over south india over north india over the expanse in which the lord has kept you and keeping you the vision to reach the nation is being given through this authority of the road upon your life this morning receive it in the name of jesus christ let me move into the second sign that the lord wants to give you this morning and that is chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 then the lord said put your hand inside your clock so moses put his hand into his clock and when he took it out the skin was leprous it has become as white as snow now put it back into your clock he said so moses put his hand back into his clock and he took it out 
it was restored like rest of his flesh. The second sign that we read here is that, you know, Moses was putting his hand into his bosom. And when he brings it out, it becomes leprous. Leprosy is parallel to sin. Something that can start as invisible, but then it makes it and it grows and ugly and it just contagious. It can spread easily. It can isolate you. It can separate you. But he is also asked to put it back. And when he pulls it back, it becomes the same as his flesh, as beautiful as, his, as it was before. Now, why did God ask to put the hand to the bosom? I believe that heart affects everything that we do. Moses knows that what is in his heart. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 talks about we are called to watch over our hearts with all diligence. From it for flows the issue of life. Moses knew what is in his heart never forgotten the day he killed the Egyptian, the day he buried him under the sand. For 40 years, he was living under the guilt of fear. Why did God use this very unusual sign for Moses? God wants to tell him that I am bigger than your heart. I am bigger than your heart. Your sins are like scarlet, but they shall be as white as snow. Red as crimson, they shall be as wool. God has the power to cleanse, purify, transform hearts. Transformation is a calling God has placed upon you as a church, transformation, transforming lives, lives as a calling that God has placed upon your church. Ezekiel chapter 36, 26, 27 talks about, I'm going to give you a new heart, not stone, but flesh with spirit. But this transformation doesn't happen as, a, as, you, as you tingle over your eyes. The transformation happens only when you put your hand back to the heart. There should be a deeper, deeper transformation that you need to look at as a church. Church, living stones. I'm reminded about Joshua. On the day of memorial, uh, that stones were erected. God didn't ask them to bring gold or silver or glittering things. He asked simple things. Go to the muddy Jordan, pick up some hard rock, carry it, put it up. God doesn't look for glittering ministries for you, but living stones which are foundational and to make that living stones, a lot of cleaning is needed, a lot of transformation is needed. The people who join you should be deeply rooted in the word of God. So it is not a superficial transformation that Lord is telling Moses. He's saying that, put your hands back. I have the power to clean. Clean you perfectly. Clean you beautifully. When your heart is clean, when you are transformed, Moses knows that his hands 
can be stretched out to heaven and the heaven can also stretch the hands towards him. There is a new confidence that the Lord wants to put upon you as people of God, as church, as individuals, as a pastor, you who stretch forth your hands to heaven, the heaven will stretch forth the hands upon you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The hand become leprous, but the hand can become more cleaner for God's purposes. Shelter house. Days of transformation is before you. There are lives whose hearts are like leprous, contagious, guilt, fear, worries. God is going to use you as you stretch out your hands to those hands which are leprous. And the Lord wants to pull you, pull them out into you as a family where he can stretch forth his hands and bless those people. Your hands are very important. The road is very important. The road is in the fresh hand which is pure and holy. Now the third sign. That's in verse 9 which says that but if you, if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Very specifically, Moses is asked to pick up water from Nile. Nile River is very much revered by the Egyptians. It's been considered as having powers. It brought wealth to the Egyptians. It is considered as the reason for the fertility. Water, water from Nile contrasts to the blood that is powerful than these waters. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ that is washed, sanctified, made you as a people, as shelter house, is going to be powerful than the waters, the Niles that are around you. What does blood shows? It speaks about covenant. It speaks about a people who have been sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. It shows the power on the people of Israel that's been sprinkled by blood on the post, the Passover. When Moses saw water turning into blood, he was remembering the power of the covenant that God made with his forefather, Abraham. What does the blood mean to you this morning? It talks about a generational influence. It talks about Abraham's influence on Isaac, his influence on Jacob, and his influence on the 12 tribes, and then influence as a vast nation now, and as a leader, he remembers the blood is thicker than the water of Nile. Moses sees God's faithfulness. Moses sees God's promises. It is repeating, he never forgets. God has not forgotten. That is what 
the spirit wants to remind you this morning as people of god who has received the promise of god as people of god's covenant that he has not forgotten you this morning hallelujah moses remembers that he had his own failures his own rejections his own disappointment his own difficulties that he went through but now moses sees victory that is won through the blood of the lamb that's now for us jesus who has crucified himself for us and has given us the victory in every situation there is no life in the water but there is life in the blood there is no power in the water but there is power in the blood there is no cleansing in the water but there is power in the blood there is cleansing in the blood there is no healing in the water but there is healing in the blood there is no promise in the water but there are promises in the blood shabala baraka sidi andar rambala bashanda rabasika rabash this morning the spirit wants to remember remind you that you are not people who just pour water from the nile and leave your livelihood you are not just been fertile by provided by the nile by the egyptian but the heavenly god whose provisions come from heaven as he opens his heavenly gates and flood you and your and your families and your church with the anointing that has given to you the blood blood reminds you of your influence over a generation you as a covenant people if you believe if you trust god if you trust jesus and his spirit to move among you then a generation is before you who will come and respond to the things that the lord is doing in 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 the midst of you as well as through you hallelujah what a blessing that the lord wants to pour upon you as shelter house this morning road in the fresh hand the hands are not more guilty and leprous is a hand that can stretch out to heaven and heaven will reach out to you the water turning into blood oh hallelujah the blood of the covenant transformation reaching out to nations influencing a generation engaging with a nation transforming lives hallelujah and influencing a generation that is your call that is your call and what i really like about this part of the bible is in chapter 3 verse 5 it says do not come any closer god said take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground hallelujah the place where you are standing is holy ground i i know that uh, you may be in the house you may be in the in the church if if you can take off your shoes i, I know that you might have left the shoes outside the church outside the home that's why uh, you know i just want to make this as a symbolic uh, presentation in in the sense that take off your shoes god want that divine encounter with you this morning you know particularly in the north of india in south of india 
Whenever we come before, come to a home, we will take our shoes off. Why? Because you don't want to bring in the soil of everyday life. And this morning, I just want to remind you the Lord has been faithful to you for the last 12 years. I'm grateful to him for where you are now. But there are some soils, something we need to keep it out and something we need to grasp and then to move ahead because this is a holy ground. He is calling us to a holy ground, a place of removal, a place of encounter, and a place of fresh assignment. Hallelujah. A place of encounter. Why a place of encounter? Maybe for some of you, God wants to break into some of your resignations, breaks into some of your holding back, settling back in life. God wants to restore your calling. No more God wants to know of him, but you know him well. A place of encounter is the beginning for a new day. Place of encounter. And it is a place of new release. You move from hiddenness to openness. Moses is no more hiding in the wilderness. For you, the promise is that I'm going to release you into an open space and I'm going to use you with a fresh anointing and the tool that is in your hand and you will be miraculous and wonderful. A freedom, a new release of freedom from what you have been bound. A new empowering presence a new authority, a release that is upon you. This is also going to be a place of turning. That's what Dr. Jabraj uncle has shared with us. A returning, a turning, a turning of fake failures into fruitfulness. A turning from disappointments into a restored vision, a new thing that the Lord wants to put before you. And this holy ground is a place of decisions and choices. Decisions and choices. To move, to deal with things, to leave the past, to receive the word, to believe in new things, to understand and, oh, discern the things of the Spirit. This is the new season he is placing before you this morning. A place to remove, a new encounter, a fresh assignment, a place to turn from things of the past and to move forward under the power of the Holy Spirit. I just want to thank God for this word that has come to us. And as we stand together, as we sit and listen to the word and the spirit, I pray that the as you stand at the edge of the new day, let the road of authority come upon you in a fresh way. As you stand in this new day, let your hearts be pure so that you can stretch out your hands to others and transformation can come. As you stand in this new day, forget about the waters of Nile. 
Think about the covenant that's made with the blood, not just for you, but for the generations that the Lord is blessing you this morning. Father, this morning I just release these blessings upon your people. I pray for Pastor Ashley and Sheba and children and other leaders who are leading. I pray that your spirit will be greatly upon their lives with grace and abundance, wisdom and knowledge to take your church to the new heights. Father, the vision that's been put in their heart to reach out to this nation, to reach out to Bangalore, to reach out to the places that God you have uh, put in their hearts, O oh God, Father. Father, I pray for transformations that need to be brought through their lives, into the lives that are around them, into the neighborhood that are around them, O oh God. Father, I also pray that you're a covenant God who just move through intergenerational, and I pray for that influence to happen. As a church, let them shine forth. Thank you for the holy ground in which we are speaking. Thank you for the return. Thank you for the new ground. Thank you for the divine choices. Thank you for everything that you have placed to God. Father, before them this morning, I speak your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that they will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.